GB News, the channel set up to promote free speech, has already suspended one of its presenters. That was for taking the knee. This was the incident which started the row. The benefit of hindsight, I may have underestimated how close to the surface the racism still was. I actually now get it, and so much so that I think, you know, we should all take the knee. In fact, why not take the knee now and just say it's a gesture, but it's an important gesture. And, you know, it's not about me in the studio, but for them to do that as footballers on the field makes sense because they're saying it's just not right. And racism has no place in football and no place in modern Britain. And those people who think that being English is is, is okay with being anti-black people are completely misguided. And they need to know that there is no space for them in normal, acceptable society. Now, that was Guto Hari. He's a former BBC journalist and a former advisor to Boris Johnson. He's recently started hosting that show on GB News, which you just saw. Now, you might be surprised to watch that. It was a kind of uncharacteristically thoughtful intervention from a GB News presenter. But it caused a huge backlash from the channel's snowflake audience. They proceeded to boycott the channel. Now, I'm going to show you a characteristic tweet from one of the very upset GB News viewers. This is the Brexit Defence League. They have 27,000 followers and they tweeted, thousands turn off GB News as they begin virtue signalling to viewers and take the knee. What happened to Andrew Neil's promise of anti-woke journalism? GB News is no better than the BBC. They deserve to lose what's left of their diminishing viewers. Now, of course, it is difficult to know quite how many people actively boycotted the channel. But one thing we do know is that whatever the reason, not many people are watching it. Indeed, The Guardian have reported that at certain times this week, GB News attracted zero viewers. Yes, zero viewers. Now, this wasn't at 2 a.m. either. It wasn't the, the graveyard shift. Let's go to a section of that report. Business editor Liam Halligan and former Labour MP Gloria De Piero attracted no measurable audience to their show between 1pm and 1.30pm on Wednesday afternoon. During the same time slot, the BBC News Channel attracted 62,000 viewers, while Sky News had 50,000 people watching. GB News's audience again briefly dipped to zero at 5pm during a late afternoon programme co-hosted by ex-BBC presenter Simon McCoy and former UKIP spokesperson Alex Phillips. Now, you might ask, what does it mean to say no measurable effect? Presumably, there was at least one person um, in Britain watching GB News at that time. Now, it is quite possible there was um, one person watching GB News at that time. Ratings are worked out by monitoring the devices of 5,100 households who are representative of the overall UK viewing public. And then they, using that representative sa sample, estimate how many people would have watched each show. So, here we can assume that no one in any of those 5,100 households was watching GB News. Now, whether or not that was because the show is boring or because people were actively boycotting it, it has clearly shaken GB News. On Thursday, they tweeted an apology for Hari taking the knee. They wrote, on Tuesday, a contributing presenter took the knee live on air, and this was an unacceptable breach of our standards. Their standards are to be a little bit racist or, or not be anti-racist, I suppose. Now, they've since gone further and suspended Hari. Um, sources at the station told The Guardian, sorry, that Hari had been taken off air indefinitely. And all of this shows that apparently the station, which rails against woke mobs, gave in to demands of its own right-wing mob who were upset that the channel was not 100% reactionary 100% of the time, only 90% reactionary 90% of the time. A friend of Guto Hari told The Guardian, GB News is becoming an absurd parody of what it proclaimed to be, not defending free speech and combating cancel culture, but replicating it on the far right. Nasty. It's ridiculous to say he's breached editorial standards and almost certainly defamatory. In reality, it wasn't a breach of editorial code, but sacked for offending the lynch mob. Now, Aaron, I want to bring you in on this. GB News is clearly a parody of itself, isn't it? It launched saying we are a channel for free speech. We don't give it to woke mobs. We're here to challenge them. Then the moment some of their audience don't like what they've seen, they cave in, they sack or suspend or take off air one of their main presenters. It is unique. I don't think there's another instance of a presenter on the BBC or Channel 4 ITV doing what he did. And there is an argument to be made that, you know, a presenter, a 
contractually, you know, it's not a guest. It's not somebody who's just a guest presenter. He is a guest presenter, but he has some sort of long-term relationships to a news organization. GB News is obviously not a news organization, but it claims to be. I can see the argument and say, well, you shouldn't do that again. That's not what's happened. What's happened is he's basically been put on permanent gardening leave because there was an effective de facto boycott because there are so many racists that watch their channel. And and actually, the last thing they care about is freedom of speech. They want to defend your freedom of speech, Michael, just as long as they agree with you. And if they don't, then you need to shut the hell up, which is what happened with Gita Hari. So, yes, it reveals a, a genuine weak, weak point in, in right-wing politics, which I think the left is getting better at. We gave them far too much space and room on this for years, particularly because of Brexit. But these people actually care about freedom of expression less than anyone else, not more, less than anyone else. Uh, and, you know, Rosa Luxemburg was that great left-wing defender of freedom of expression. I think as a socialist, you have to believe in freedom of speech. Uh, and the right, you know, it's just, it's just been, a, it's been a means by which they've been able to insert themselves into popular political conversations and give themselves a certain credit when they never deserved it because they really don't but they really don't believe in this stuff they really don't believe in this stuff the amount of times michael i've tried to invite on for interview a, a right-wing thinker who's written a book or whatever they're an influential person and to talk about what they do they don't even they don't even respond that's their right by the way they can do that but we we make an effort at navarra media to talk to people that we don't agree with you yourself when you're hosting this you try and see an argument from both points of view etc they don't do that they don't do that because what GB News is, Michael, is it's not a media organization. It's political communications, which is to say what it does, just like Fox News, it finds a political argument, which it disagrees with. It finds the weakest possible part of that argument or the weakest advocate of the argument, and it then relentlessly attacks it. That's not news. That's not investigating. That's not informing your audience. It's propaganda. Uh, and so, of course, it shouldn't really surprise us that propagandists aren't that interested in freedom of expression. Two different things. I want to push back against the first thing you said there, Aaron, because you suggested that whilst it is disproportionate to put Guto Hari on gardening leave, it might have been reasonable to admonish him because he is a host, he's not a guest, and he was taking a, a overtly political stance. Now, that, of course, would be fair enough if this was the BBC or the IT or ITV. Obviously, Robert Peston can't take the knee on ITV because they're not allowed to take any political stances on those channels. But GB News set itself up precisely to be an opinionated station. In all of their opening statements, in all of their founding documents, they suggest we are going to have opinionated hosts. He was an express he was expressing an opinion. That's completely allowed at GB News. And in fact, I want to can we jump to graphic 15 Fox? Um, so this was tweeted by Andrew Neal after the launch night when Dan Wooten sort of railed um, against government scientists, saying they were, you know, obsessed and, and addicted to power, um, completely spreading lots of misinformation about lockdowns. And in response to that controversy, Andrew Neal tweeted, I'm the flagship presenter. I did not say this. If another presenter said this, that's for them to defend. I don't agree with it. But GB News believes in free speech even for presenters. He then goes on, it has nothing to do with hate, it's just wrong, et cetera, et cetera. But the key part there, GB News believes in free speech, even for presenters. So GB News explicitly, if you're a presenter, you're allowed to have a political opinion. All of their presenters express um, lots of often quite extreme political opinions. It's only if the opinion you express um, is anti-racist that you get into trouble. Since um, putting Guto Hari on gardening leave, the channel's director of programming, John McAndrew, has resigned. I'm sure you haven't heard of John McAndrew, so we're going to go to the Guardian report, which gives us some context here. McAndrew, a well-known figure in the television news industry who has a long track record at mainstream outlets, including Sky News and Euro News, was considered to be the channel's second in command and played a key role in convincing many of the more established mainstream presenters to join. Sources suggest he had come under pressure to dial down the focus on local reporting and free debate in favour of full-blooded culture war topics, so chose to resign. Um, also leaving is Jill Penlington. Um, the Guardian say um, she is, again, she's a senior producer. She'd worked at CNN and, and, and Sky News. So you've got lots of senior figures now leaving, especially the ones who come from 
mainstream journalistic establishments, people who wanted it to focus on local news. And and you'll remember that opening advert where they say, we, we speak for all of England. Now, clearly, the bosses have said, no, we want to go heavy on culture wars because that's the kind of thing we pe- people tune into. And now there's there's a big split within the organization. Of course, we showed you an Andrew Neil tweet. He's obviously been topic of much speculation because after two weeks of hosting the flagship show and after being the chair of the organization for its launch, he's already gone on an unplanned extended holiday. Um, People were also speculating because he hadn't tweeted about the organization for a couple of weeks. But I think in response to that speculation today, he tweeted, startups are fraught and fractious. GB News is no exception, but the news channel is finding its feet and has a great future. Watch this space. Um, Aaron, do you think that uh, that Andrew Neal is going to follow these other senior executives and and leave GB News, or do you think he's going to be in it for the long haul? No, I think he'll I think he'll bail. There are a few things uh, that he's been involved in, in the past. So there, there was a newspaper, for instance, called Today. There was the European newspaper, not the New European. Um, these these were both from the early nineteen nineties, which he was involved in, and they both they both folded. Um, so he's been involved in failed media projects before big money media projects. So that that wouldn't be new. Uh, Equally, you know, he was involved in the creation of Sky News. Murdoch sent him over there from the Sunday Times. He walked away. That wasn't a failure, but he walked away from it. He was sent to work uh, at startup Fox News. My God, this guy was working for the BBC for 20 years. He didn't really make much impact there. So uh, Andrew Neal is a strange creature because he's a confection of effectively the Rupert Murdoch complex in print media, particularly the Sunday Times, and the BBC. But other than that, he hasn't really been particularly successful. You know, he loves the free market, but his broadcast career has rested on effectively a a massively well-funded public service broadcaster. Quite ironic. So I I don't think there's any real evidence in his in his resume that he'll turn this around. I think he's 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 gonna walk away because he's he's quit similar projects in the past. So I don't see why this would be any different. The most pathetic thing of all, Michael, is that he'll probably go back to the BBC. The BBC will probably take him back. I just find the whole thing fatuous, ridiculous, bizarre. Um, I do think also that GB News, I mean, it has two options at this point, doesn't it? It has, you know, a sort of, either it just collapses, which may happen. Um, Like I said, there's been similar media projects in the past. It's generally been newspapers. There was a paper that was launched by the left in the 80s called, I believe it was called The News on Sunday. People can correct me in the comments. A couple of million went into that. I think it only ended up producing maybe a dozen editions. It went out of business. So this isn't new. Uh, and of course, because of the falling costs of entry into things like broadcast media, particularly radio, particularly TV, maybe we should be expecting almost these kinds of ventures to be increasingly common, but also increasingly likely to fail. Uh, I always thought the approach was a very strange one. They should have started minimal built up, learn from the mistakes, recruit as you go, rather than week one, day one, anno zero, that's it. Singing, dancing, you know, BBC News, zero calorie version, right, but very right wing. I didn't I didn't think that was a wise way to proceed. They should have started like then a YouTube channel, maybe got a DAB license, maybe did an LBC style thing. That would have made more sense to me, which does suggest they don't know what they're doing. 